let's get into our next film, The Irishman. Now, The Irishman is a film that I've already talked about on the show, uh, but Will, you had a chance to see it as well. Uh, this is an epic crime film based as I Heard You Paint Houses. It's actually how they title it on screen. Like a movie starts. Yeah, that was it, weird. Wasn't that kind of strange? Uh, this is directed, directed and produced by Martin Scorsese, uh, written by Steven Zalian. And it's based on the 2004 book, I Heard You Paint Houses by Charles Brant. It stars Robert De Niro, Al Pacino, Joe Pesci, Pesci Ray Romano, Bobby Cannavale, Anna Paquin, Stephen Graham, Stephanie Kersuba, Jesse Plemons, and Hy-Vee, Harvey Keitel. Hyvie, wow. Hyvie Keitel. Hyvie, good old Hyvie. Hyvie Kyvie. <laughs> All right, Will Ashton, The Irishman. Again, I've already talked about this one a bit, so uh, catch up the listeners. What is this one about? And what do you think of The Irishman? It's going to be on Netflix soon, so people are going to be able to see it finally. Yeah, and I think it's playing in theaters as of now. Um, yeah, limited release, so yeah. you might be able to see it in your area. Definitely see if, uh, yeah. if that's the case. Um, yeah, check your local listings. Um, yeah, no, I, I mean, I think I am similar to where you are, but I think I ultimately appreciated it more than you did. Just generally speaking, because like I agree with you that as the movie was like for the first hour or so, I was like kind of with it. But I was like, this is a little wobbly, like mainly because I just didn't think the de aging technology was really seamless in the way that the movie was hoping it would be. Um, it was just like I was always just like, yeah, that's a CG Robert De Niro. Like, it's not like that's a young um, uh, Frank. It's just like, yeah, I. I it never really bought into that per se. And I was like, at the beginning of the movie, I was also like, is, is this just Taren, or is this Tarantino? Is this Scarsese just kind of retreading similar ground, just doing. And on the de aging thing, can I say, I spent a lot of yeah. this film just being like, man, that 55 year old sure has young kids. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's like mainly they just, I mean, they, I'm sure they did stuff with the body, but it's mostly just like, they just like de age the head. So it doesn't really, like, it's still like the Benjamin Button kind of thing where it's like, uh, an older man and trying like a youthful face on an older man trying to be a younger boy. I don't know. It's a little weird, but um, yeah, I, I don't know. I was telling you about this. Like, I think the aging and I won't focus too much on this as far as my general thoughts of, on the film, just talking about it now. Um, I do think it tends to look better when there's less movement involved, because I think about like the better examples of this recently, like um, like the Ant-Man movies with Michael Douglas or like uh, Kurt Russell and the Guardians of the Galaxy movies, or most recently um, Gemini Man with Will Smith and um, I forget Samuel L. Uh, Jackson, Termin- Captain Marvel. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah that's that, well, that's a better example. Yeah, because there's a decent amount of movement in that one. I was thinking more though, like the Linda Hamilton, um, Arnold Schwarzenegger de aging in yeah. Terminator Dark Fate, where it's like that required very little movement from them, so like it felt like a lot more natural and a little more. Uh, effortless in a way that I think this movie never quite had that and, uh, and I think that was to the movie's detriment but moreover I mean beyond that I just think the beginning of the movie I was just kind of like what's Scorsese doing here that he hasn't really done before like what what, what ground is he tapping on is he just kind of retreading similar ground and then when uh, Al Pacino's uh, Jimmy Hoffa comes into the, the scene that's when the movie kind of comes to life in a lot of respects I think that's like him working off of De Niro and subsequently De Niro working off Pacino more, like their relationship is growing on the screen. Let me put McGee on the phone. Hello? Hi, my friend, how are you? Listen, I got that kid I was talking to you about here. I'm gonna put him on the phone and let you talk to him, okay? Right. Hello? Is that Frank? Yes. Hiya, Frank. This is Jimmy Hoffa. Yeah, yeah. Glad to meet you. Well, glad to meet you, too, even if it's over the phone. I heard you paint houses. Yes, yes, sir, I I do. I do, and I uh, I also do my own carpentry. Oh, I'm glad to hear that. I understand you're a brother of mine. Yes, sir. Local 107, since 1947. Yeah. You know, uh, our friend speaks very highly of you. Thank you. He's not an easy man to please. Well, I do my best. Uh, that's where I was like really seeing the movie kind of like grow and vibrate, vibrate. And so like, yeah, this is a good film. Like I was still wasn't quite um, like in the best of the year territory with it yet. But then like that, the relationship there takes a kind of drastic turn where it gets a little more like based, I think, largely on the length of the film and the scope of it, where like you see the progression of it, you see the evolution of it. And you see the outcome of it in a way that by the second half of the film, especially 
uh, in the thir- last like 30 minutes or so, I was really, really taken by the film and I, I really appreciated what the scope, like I could see what Scorsese wanted to do here. I could see and value what he wanted to do with this project and why he wanted to be the scale and this budget. And I really enjoyed it. And I think, I don't know if I'm quite on the page where some people are like, this is one of his like best movies ever. Uh, this is one of his all time greats. I'm still like, I really like the movie a lot, but I don't think it's quite there, but I would have no problem saying this is one of the best movies of the year. Uh, I do still, I, I I've tried, I've reflected a lot on this film and I might give it another chance, but my, my opinion is really unchanged on it. I think that aside from a handful of scenes, there, there just wasn't much. I found all that compelling and like the individual dialogue and a lot of the character interactions until the very end. And even then, I didn't find myself fully satisfied by Scorsese's thesis on old age, regret, and perhaps, most interesting of all to me, his reflection on his own career and maybe how he feels slightly guilty for Mm -hmm. aiding some of the unintended ill effects of his movies being misinterpreted as glorifications of crime. Yeah, no, I mean, that's definitely what I appreciated about the film, and I think the scope of it really... Like, the weight of it, I think, was what really took me by the end of it. And it's not like I wasn't expecting that, per se. I mean, I had a rough idea that's where it was going to go. But I just think the way it was executed and the way that he was able to pull it off, especially in the second half, where he wasn't really relying on his usual style tricks. Like, I think it was a lot more grounded and a lot more reserved as far as, like, what you typically expect from a Scorsese movie. And I think that's what makes it, for me at least, a pretty solid companion piece to silence where that movie was also exploring grief and remorse uh, more from a Catholic sense or from a, from Catholicism particularly, but which is another recurring theme huh. in yeah. the Scorsese movies. But I think this one was like doing similar ideas, but yeah. I would say that this is a more accessible film probably than silence, but I think right. I prefer That's why silence I see it quite a bit more. No, I agree with that. I mean, I think of the two, I mean, I'm not far off from either of them, but I think Silence I appreciated more because it felt like more of a departure for uh, Scorsese while also He feeling departed, very much you want to say, ha, from films ha, ha, he done? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but no, I mean, I think this one, though, even despite the length and some of the, um, I don't know, I guess some of the more uh, reserved scenes that we were talking about, I think this one will be seen more and kind of approach more than silence ultimately just because for different whatever reasons that wasn't really an accessible film for a lot of people and uh unfortunately it suffered for that reason but i mean i just really i mean as i was watching i could really see why scorsese wanted to make this film like it didn't feel like uh, once we got past like the first hour or so i think i really didn't see it as a complete retread I, i did see it as a response but in a way that was still telling a fully realized and compelling story while also providing, you know, like a sense of closure to his other movies that um, I don't think was really often found. And so I, I really yeah. appreciate that. I, I, I kind of agree with that. I, I see it as a worthy epitaph for Scorsese. I think sure. he'll probably still keep making movies, obviously. But yeah, yeah, if if this is the film that sort of sums everything up in his filmography and his career, this is a good way to end it, I think. Like a good way to end sort of his take on like the gangster movies that have made him such a beloved presence, right? I've, I've talked before about how Goodfellas is one of my all-time favorite films, and I, I just think that legacy is unmistakable. So and I think The Irishman was always going to be a large hurdle for me to like view the film the same way, and I, I know I already got into this a little bit. I think the weakness for me was just I just wasn't quite as interested in the subject matter. Um, As much as I like the book, I think the story of Frank Frank Sheeran and Jimmy Hoffa and the the union mob stuff, I just didn't find as compelling as the the rise and ascent of the characters in Goodfellas, just by comparison, even though it's like the same actors for the most part, right? But uh, a little sad, actually, that Ray Lotto wasn't in this, but regardless. He was too busy doing a marriage story. (laughs) Exactly, exactly. And he wasn't even in that one that much. But regardless, I, I, I again, I, I don't want to discount this film or the impact that I think it is having on people. Not one of my favorites of the year, but uh, a film that I do see as, like you said, it's it's good closure for a lot of the themes that Scorsese has been telling with his films for a long time. I just didn't find it that compelling of a film in the details. That's really what it comes down to for me. So, and I didn't, the only performance that I find really compelling and memorable is the Al Pacino performance. I think the Joe Pesci performance is also good, 
but the Pacino one is the one that stuck with me quite a bit more. So, uh, mm. I, I'm, I'm still a B on this. I think that's where I've been this whole time. Um, and kind of like a middle of the road B again, and that's obviously a good place to be. That means I think the film is good. And I think that people, most people will like it when they check it out. Uh, but what about you? Well, where have you landed at this point? Um, I'm not far off from where you are. Ultimately, I guess I just appreciate the movie a little bit more. Maybe that's me not having as much of a relationship to like movies like Goodfellas and Casino and ultimately, uh, coming, coming in with this a little bit fresher, I guess in that respect, but. Oh yeah. Cause you still haven't seen Goodfellas. That's correct. But I feel like I have, oh, man. it's like, like a lot of people who haven't <laughs> seen it's a wonderful life, but like they feel like they have, cause every movie ever has like borrowed from it basically. Like, sure, I feel sure. like that, like, you know, like I saw hustlers this year. I saw several movies that have been influenced by Goodfellas nonstop. So it's like, I get the gist. <laughs> I feel like, but I, I, I uh, will give credit to you. I am, I am. I'm going to see it. I mean, obviously I have to see it. I mean, I should, I, I owe it to myself and I, I owe it to cinema to see it, but um, no, I really enjoyed it. The only thing I'll push back on what you were saying there is I, for me, it was Pesci's performance that stood out the most of the three. I oh, really like what Pesci okay. was doing. I mean, I like Pacino a lot in this movie as well. I think he's very charismatic. It's definitely one of his stronger performances in a while. Uh, Cause it, it's, I can't very see that though. Yeah. Okay. I, I can see I can see the appreciation for appreciation for Joe Pesci because there is an understated solemn darkness yeah. to that performance that is interesting. Right. So I I totally get it. Yeah, that's why I think I appreciate it more because it's like you know like with uh, Pacino, it's good, but it's like very showy in a way that I I mean I tend to prefer the more kind of understated reserved approach that Pesci took ultimately. So uh, I I think they're all very good. I mean I, I don't want to undersell De Niro though. I mean I think. You didn't I do. quite appreciate it, but I, I thought he did, especially by the second half, I thought he was really doing some great work. Um, I just think the de-aging tech for him just wasn't very good. I, I think that took away from his performance, unfortunately. And I don't think this is like a top tier De Niro performance, but I, I, I do think he did some really good job, good work. I mean, so um, I don't want to undersell that. But um, yeah, no, I mean, I think we basically said a lot of it. I really like it. I mean, I guess for me, I'm like, like the first hour is like a B for me. The like second hour is like a B plus, and then like the remaining hour and a half is like an A minus. I guess roughly that would equate to like a B plus, but I'm gonna give it the A minus, just because I really appreciated what uh, did, um, Scorsese uh, pulled off here, and I, I I I really hope people check it out. I feel like if they sp- take the time, especially if they see it in theaters to see it, they'll get something that feels worthwhile, and they they feel like they got a true character driven epic in a way that are becoming very few and far between in theaters. So yeah, I would definitely recommend wow. it. Wholesome. Whole, wholeheartedly. Two, I mean, two a minuses from Will Ashton in one yeah. episode. Yeah. For the Irishman and for frozen two. That's incredible. Mm. Um, no, I, that's for mm. our listeners who skip past the frozen two. Review. Yeah. <laughs> like, man, Will must've really liked it. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, awesome. So glad, glad you liked it a lot. Uh, it, it really, it really does. Uh, it it really does make me feel good to know that uh, a film that's three and a half hours long can still be made and it can still have a yeah. profound effect on people. So that's good. Mm-hmm. And uh, especially seeing it in a theater. I'm glad we were both able to do that. So if people do see it in theater, so I mean, obviously, because it's three and a half hours, plan accordingly. Uh, maybe yeah, don't exactly. don't load up on drinks beforehand. Don't <laughs> don't don't have that yeah. steak dinner. Yeah, Just, don't uh, show up sauced. That's for sure. Yeah, that that would, that would probably be the wrong idea. But yeah, I, I do hope people check it out in theaters if they can, if they haven't yeah. already. All right, that is the Irishman out in limited release right now. It's gonna be hitting Netflix, I think, on the twenty seventh or so. So this next week. Yeah, for Thanksgiving. 